Let's turn our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. We're going to look at one verse. Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. We're going to look at verse 14. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 14. The Bible says, The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Brother Jack, can you pray for the message? Saving our souls from hell by your precious blood. Thank you for eternal security. Thank you for sending us with the Holy Ghost of promise. But thank you for this place that you have allowed us to gather together. Thank you for uh, the freedom that we still have to listen to your word. We ask you that you'll fill each and every one of us with your Holy Spirit. Uh, please be with the uh, people who are watching, watching through online, that you'll be with them. And we ask you for those who are unable to uh, be here due to health or other issues. Pray that you will uh, heal them and comfort them and provide all the things that they need. Lord Jesus Christ, we need you all the time. And without you, we can't do anything. And Lord God, we ask you that you will open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us not to focus on the things that are happening around the world or even in our lives as of right now, help us just wholly give ourselves unto your work and convict us, Lord God, help us to change, Lord. Yes. Uh, just help us get, get back on the right track. Help us to uh, just cling on to you and not just be so uh, downtrodden by the world or the devil and the flesh. We thank you and love you. Pray that you'll be with Pastor Jay, fill him with your Holy Spirit. Yes. Speak through him, Lord God, protect him and giving the words and the authority from on high to deliver your word to us. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 That's the verse references, and I'll be preaching on backslider. So title of the message, Are You a Backslider? Are You a Backslider? As one of our brother already mentioned, you know, backslider, backsliding, it's something that every Christian goes through and does on a daily basis. If you don't admit that you backslide, you're lying to your own selves. When it comes to the Word of God, you know, backsliding is not a New Testament term. So there's no such thing as actually a backslidden Christian, doctrinally. But you could use it practically and devotionally, learning from Proverbs 14, 14, as well as Jeremiah chapter 2. And when you look at Webster's Dictionary, backslider is a someone who lapses morally or in the practice of religion or to revert to a worse condition. A lot of times, as a Christian, we forget that we revert to our old ways. Right? When you look at Romans 6 and 7, you know, do mortify your members of the body. When you consider your body as a dead member, you know, you'll sin less, obviously. You'll backslide less. However, many, many times, because of who you are and who I am, because we still live with our flesh, it is very, very hard thing to do. 2 Timothy 2.22 says, you know, flee also you for less. And that's not just talking about, you know, young people. It's everybody. You're dealing with lust problem all the time. Lust of the flesh, right? And what your flesh wants you to do is not what your spirit wants you to do, right? Whole spirit and flesh is always in the opposites. I think one of the greatest controversies or greatest, how should I say, people have issues with is, you know, not separating your flesh from what Holy Spirit wants you to do. And it comes to a lot of subjects. And ones that always, how should I say, kindle people's feather is the music, right? Yes. And 
people are like, okay, this music has a godly lyrics. I mean, so what, right? If you drop the music with all this, you know, beats and stuff, that's why, you know, you need to go and study. Don't just feel like, my, my flesh feels like that's wrong. You know, did you ever realize that your flesh is always wrong? That means that you're listening to your flesh, which causes you to think contrary to what the Bible says. And, you know, we see comments, you know, we see, you know, people's objections when it comes to music. Just think about it. If you drop the lyrics and if your body starts moving, that's not a good sign. If you drop the lyrics and you listen to it and you start thinking carnal thoughts, fleshly thoughts, then it's wrong. And if you really want to study, you know, go to, you know, we have plenty of, you know, materials in our website when it comes to history of music. I mean, Dr. Ruckman has a book on history of music. You know, Pastor Jin Kim has videos on history of music. Instead of just always complaining, instead of always just making, you know, comments that you, just out of your spite or complaining, murmuring, you know, attitude, do some study. You know, Bible says, study to show thyself up front to God. A workman that needed not to be a shame, but rightly divine the word of truth. The reason you backslide, the reason you, you know, murmur and complain against godly teaching, preaching, those sound doctrine, is because you don't study. You know, it's really, really, you know, it's painful to see so many Christians because they don't do their due diligence. Because you don't do your due diligence and study. What happens is that when you hear someone be critical of a Bible doctrine or biblical doctrine, or when you hear someone critical of a Bible-believing preacher or teacher, you just start listening to him right away. It's like instead of you weighing the evidence on your own, you listen to others. I mean, first, verse 14, 14 says, you know, backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. I mean, you don't care about God's ways. You don't care about, you know, sound doctrine. You don't care about the KJV 1611 and its teachings. You only care about your own ways. You only care about your own flesh. You only care about your own desires and passions. You only care about your own pleasure. You only care about what you like. So what happens? As I mentioned, so when you hear like John MacArthur's of the world and R.C. Sproul's, when you, think, when you hear all these false preachers, right? Even Joel Austin, on, and then they smile at you and you're having a bad day. And you're like, wow, you know, they're God's people. You know, they must love me. You know, God must use them. However, if a person cannot even answer to someone who's interviewing them, you know, what's the way to heaven? You know, Jesus is the only way, right? Yes. If you can't even answer that, you, you could only get saved through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ by trusting as your Lord and Savior. If you can't even testify and confess that, then who are you? You're, you're, you're not a godly preacher. That's right. As, you know, someone said, right? They're false prophets. Tell the truth. Amen. The problem with, you know, Christians nowadays is that, you know, they're very shallow. Shallow. True. Yeah, shallow. Yeah. If your feelings get hurt for even a little bit, you hop on to different preacher. That's right. That's you, know, you know, it's really easy to do on the internet, right? You know, if I hurt your feeling, I'm sorry, but if what the Bible says, then I'm not sorry. Amen. If I do it personally, then it's on me. However, if it's what the Word of God says, then it's on you. Right. And don't complain to me or get mad at me. You know, right. get mad at God right. because he's the author, right? Yes. You know, just tell him, hey, Lord, you know, I really don't like what that preacher said to me. But the Bible says the same thing. So I don't really, and then you start reasoning to yourself and you look like fool. Yeah. Amen. So sometimes that's why you have to study. You have to think a little deeper than what someone else says. That's why, you know, our church and 
you know, as well as, you know, Bible-believing churches out there. We don't want you to stay because you feel like we need you. You know, God doesn't need you, by the way. When you look at the history of all the people that God used, you know, God always had people lined up to do his ministry. You could be that person, might not, but when God calls you to do it, it's up to you to do it. If you don't do it, it's fine. There's another person waiting. God always has someone waiting to do his ministry because that's important, right? right. I mean, there was Dr. Ruckman, yeah. you know, who fought for the King James Bible. Yeah. And after him, there are other brothers fighting for the faith. Yeah. There's always someone out there. And we, you and I should never get to a state of thinking where, you know, my ways, I am so important that without me, that church won't run. Internet or ministry on run, you know, this part of, you know, you know, teaching or Sunday class won't run. You know, that's, that's being proud, right? Yeah. You know, pride has gotten into your heart where you think you're something. Think about it, you know, backslider, right? Who's like a, a prime example of a backslider you could think of, right? The devil himself, right? He thought, you know what, you know, why should I just follow God's way, right? I deserve some praise. You know what, I think I'm something, right? Then he started from that all the way down, right? Then when you start thinking that I'm something, then just remind yourself that I'm thinking like the devil. You're like, oh, you know, that's too harsh. I'm, why is it too harsh, right? Are you treating certain sins you know, less than the other sin. I mean, it, all this sin is a sin. Yes. You know, when you think that when I rob a bank, man, that's a sin. But when I do my white lies to my family, oh, it's yeah. fine. You know, you know, it, it's okay. You know, when I don't go out there and murder someone, I'm okay. But you know what? In your heart, you're killing other brothers and sisters with your hate. You know, if you ever hated your brother, you're the same as a murder in First John. I mean, think about it. What you think and what you have in your heart will eventually come out. You know, those serial killers does not become serial killers overnight. There's a progress. There's process. You know, they might be killing animals, you know. They might have some, you know, I mean, a lot of them started killing animals, you know. And then that's, that's you know, starts them. And once they start killing human beings, you know, they don't see them as human beings. They see them like animals, you know. Then when you see your backslidden state, you know, we're applying it, right, devotionally here, then you could see that when you're out of fellowship with the Lord, you're backsliding. Yes. Plain and simple. I mean, let's turn our Bibles. I mean, you say, oh, what is it, right? Let's turn our Bibles to... First, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 19. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 19. It is important for you and I on a daily basis to check our spiritual state and how backslidden you and I have become during these last days. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 19. The Bible says, Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord God of hosts. The Lord is talking to Israel. You know, they've backslidden. And what's going on here, right? They have forsaken the Lord their God. Each day, you forsake the Lord. When you're out of fellowship with the Lord, you're forsaking the Lord. When you don't pray and when you don't read your Bible, there's no way you're not going to backslide. I mean, that's two most important things. You need to pray 
and you need to study the Bible. Without those two, you're going to backslide no matter what. How in the world are you going to fight against the devil and the flesh, right, and this world without the word of God and without prayer? And this is very cliche topic, and it's a rhetoric. However, you know, preaching is all about making you realize, be convicted of the things that you already know. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm not telling you something that you don't know. I mean, we're not, you know, doing a deep dive study in a certain Bible doctrine here. We're listening and we're preaching, and you're listening to a simple preaching about your backslidden state. Thank you. You are a backslider. I am a backslider. And you and I have to realize and recognize and we have to judge ourselves on a daily basis. I mean, isn't it going to be a lot better for you if you judge yourself first before God has to do it on his own? I mean, you know, like Galatians 6 says, you reap what you sow. So before you sow all of your sins, right, in a big, you know, lemon tree where people could see and people take it out and eat, you know, because this is on a public property, right, on a public street. Before anyone could see, before it affects everybody else, you know, judge yourself. Because wisest man was a backslider. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Kings 11.9. 1 Kings 11.9. That's why you and I have to stay humble. You and I have to have humility. You and I have to realize that we're really nothing. I mean, if you and I think that we're something, then we're thinking like the devil. That's right. I mean, God uses people who think they're nothing, right? And God puts people down who think they're something. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 9. The wisest man ever lived, right? King Solomon. Do you think you're wiser than King Solomon? No. Obviously, I'm not. That means, you know, I'm gonna, I could backslide a lot better and faster and more than this wise man, right? Let's look at 1 Kings 11, verse 9. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. When a Christian, when you and I get out of fellowship with God, we're backslidden, right? I mean, we're talking about this man when God asked him, what do you want? Anything, right? He wanted wisdom, right? I mean, this was a wise, wise man, wise king. But he grew cold and he turned away from the Lord. And then what happened? He was out of fellowship with God. It kind of is the, it tells the story of you and I, right? Yeah. And when we first got saved, what happened? We're fired up for the Lord. We're out there gung-ho preaching the gospel. We're reaching out to all of our lost ones because what we, you know, at that time, what we just received, you know, the right word of God, the real salvation, joy of salvation. You wanted to tell everybody. And because you did that, why? Because you loved the Lord. Because you were so astonished and amazed by the love that Christ has shown you at Calvary. And you're like, man, I need to tell everybody. But however, what happened, right? Your first love has dwindled. The fire has gone down. That's why Revelation 2, 4, it says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. I mean, is Lord Jesus Christ still like your first love? You know, I mean, young kids, maybe Nathan doesn't know, but many of the folks know, you know, especially if you're married or if you're of an age, right? If you have ever loved someone, that first love feeling is totally different. That first love is something that all the marriages want to you know, keep and continue because 
that's where you love that person more than anything in the world. And a lot of times you love that person at that moment. I'm not saying other moments. At that moment, it's just my personal opinion. You love that person more than you at that moment. Literally, you know, for that first love, you do anything. A lot of times people do it the wrong way. Their first love is wicked. Their first love hates God. They love to sin. But because you love them, you do it together. How many times have you done something that you regret because of someone that you love, right? How many times have you regretted because, man, we should have never done it. You know, I was blinded by love. <laughs> who says that and who hears it all the time? You know, blinded by love, that's why I do it. You know? However, when it comes to your first love, you know, when it comes to your Lord Jesus Christ, where is it right now? You know, if you're closer to the Lord, I mean, that means you're backsliding less. If you're further away from the Lord, forget about even answering the question. You know, you're at a deep, deep trouble. I mean, you're in a place where you really have to get right with the Lord. You start turning away from the simplicity of gospel. I mean, are you listening? I mean, this gospel, you know, the Paul preached, you know, 1 Corinthians 15. It's a simple gospel, right? Yeah. And then you start turning away from it. You go to MacArthur's, you go to Sproul's, you go to all these false things. And like, you know, is it really, really that easy to get saved? You start questioning sound doctrine. I mean, you're backslidden for sure. Yes. I mean, salvation is so simple that a little child can get saved. Amen. Why is it that you have to think deeper? Why, have to, you have to, why is it that you have to think outside of the word of God? Right? Because you don't think it should be that simple. You hear people say, oh, you know, this discipleship is very important, right? You know, you're committing this sin. Do you think you're really saved? I mean, once you're saved, you're always saved. <laughs> simple as that. Christ died for you just once, right? He didn't die for you every single week, like some churches tell you to, you know, believe and preach and, you know, accept. Before I got saved, man, I was taught that way. You, know, you never have assurance of salvation. Like, you never do. I mean, one of the common characteristics of a backslide is that they don't have assurance of salvation. It's like, so if you don't know where you're going after you die right now, but you think that you accepted Christ in the past, or you know that you accepted Christ in the past, it's simple. You're backslidden. You have no assurance of salvation. You don't know where you're going. And a lot of times... You do hear the right doctrine, but you don't believe it from your heart. Isn't it funny when you hear, you see, you read, and it's all right there. It's factual. It's fact. Yes. But you don't believe it, and people don't believe it. Well, how about that? I mean, what is that, right? I'm, I'm standing right here, everyone. You believe it, right? That I'm real. But some people would think that, you know, you're not real. You know, the voice that's coming out of, you know, the system is someone else. You know. But when it comes to godly doctrine and preaching, that's how people treat it. They treat it like invisible thing. Like, I hear it, I see it, I know it's real, but it's not real. I mean, that's like, you know, that's how human beings are. That's how wicked you and I are. The proof is right there, but we don't believe it. We don't trust it. That's why you turn to people. You turn to things. You turn to books. You turn to, you know, internet clips where they conform to your own idea. Right? Like, oh, you know, Dr. Ruckman was too rough. And someone complained about him like that. You know, he was too rough against women, Right? And, like, and then you start hearing these factions over there. You know, yeah, 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 let's run. You know? And then you start pointing finger you know, at Dr. Ruckman and the Bible believers. You know? And you don't even know the facts. 
you don't even know the truth, right? You know, you think certain people, right? You know, like Pastor Kim, you know, like, oh, man, he's like a authoritarian dictator, you know, he's the meanest person in the world. But how do you know? Is it just from what you're hearing? Or have you actually met the person and dealt with the person? Yeah. Right? So sometimes this, you know, baffles my mind. So-called adults with understanding, with some kind of brain, don't try to understand like an adult. But like a little kid, just listen to whatever someone says and just follow. Yeah. I mean, how are you different than many of the people that you criticize out there who say, oh, they only listen to news and just follow. You know, they're scared by all this pandemic and follow when you yourself don't do your due diligence. And when it comes to biblical stuff, when it comes to sound doctrinal stuff, we just listen to some, you know, someone out there and then you just run after them without doing your own study. That's why, you know, when it comes to King James Bible issues or anything, I always tell people, you know, don't just listen to me. Don't just listen to, you know, Dr. Kim. Do your own study. Yes. Do it. When you do it, then there's got to be conviction. People say, and I just read somewhere that, you know, we do have a hard time remembering things. But the best way to remember things is for you to teach that thing. When you teach whatever it is, you're going to remember Right? Yeah. Like, which means, like, you know, sometimes you're sharing, discussing with other people. Yeah. Right? right? You know, there's a brother right there, right? I have a hard time remembering his name. You say, start talking about him. Yeah. <laughs> start, you know, talking to people about him. You're like, I have a hard time remembering this thing. Start teaching about it. Yeah. You know, teach your kids, teach your parents, teach everybody around you, you know. Especially if you're struggling with certain biblical topics, discuss it. Teach somebody, right? You could be a witness. You're like, oh man, I have such a hard time remembering this verse. You know, start sharing it, right? You know, sharing is, you know, sometimes it's a two edged sword, right? Everybody says share and share and share. But when it comes to this biblical sound doctrine, what you have learned, what you have heard, right? Start sharing it. Then you remember it, right? That's why you shouldn't be that Christian. I mean, you know, I confess it too. It's like a weekly Christian where you forget what happened last week. Yeah. Okay. You forget what was taught. You forget what was studied, right? Because you never go back and review it. You never go back and teach it. You never go back and share it, right? Think about it. So, at this moment, some of you were like, man, this is great stuff, man. This is something that I really needed. You know, this is going to really change me, right? You know, don't let it stay there. You got to put it into action, right? And God's going to give you plenty of opportunity to put it into action, right? Unless, you know, you are living out in the woods, no internet connection, no communication at all. You know, you have source of connection. Right. Yeah, through social media, through phone, right? You know, yeah. working, anybody. Right. Then you could go out there and really either preach the gospel, you know, you could teach something, and you could share something. Then you could remember. And at that moment, when devil tempts you and tries to make you fall, you remember, right? Yes. A lot of times, because of loving mothers out there, their children stop committing or they stop doing what they're supposed to do, as in sinning. They remember their mom saying, hey, son, hey, daughter, don't do it. It's not good for you. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then you remember. And at that certain moment, you're like, oh, man, I remember my mom telling me, you know, I'm not going to do it. I'm sick of it, you know. However, you have a more sure word, right? Amen. God's word. Amen. Perfect word. Amen. And then you start remembering. And then you're like, 
the days when you are stricken by all this, you know, worldly, wicked, fleshly, devilly things, Amen. Amen. it will help you overcome it. Why? Because you remember. And only way you're going to remember is what? By praying and studying. Simple as that. I mean, it doesn't get any simpler for you, and it doesn't get any simpler for me. You know what? Everybody will raise their hand if I were to ask you, do you want to stop backsliding? You know? I mean, if you don't, then I don't know where, <laughs> where your state is, right? I don't think so, right? I, nor you, don't want to backslide. We don't want to be out of fellowship with God. We want to be in close fellowship with God. Yeah. Then what do you have to do? Simple, right? You know, pray and study the word. Yes. Pray and study the word. Simple as that. But how many of you guys honestly could say, you know, before today, that you are actually praying and studying like you should? It's every opportunity. You know, what is one of the, probably the biggest cause of Christian backsliding is what? You know, in the past, it's TV, you know, television set. And now it's transformed into what? Other mediums, right? Like cell phones, you know all the social media. What does it do? It takes your time away from the Lord. Yes. Not only that, it makes you start seeing things that you shouldn't be seeing. Right? right? Yeah. What happens when you see things and you want it? You start having covetousness. Yes. Right? You start desiring things that you don't need. Yes. I mean, look at Lot. What was his main cause of backsliding? Covetousness, right? And you have to be careful, and I have to be careful at what we see, Amen. what I see, yes. what you show your kids, what they see. Yeah. I mean, if you're like a parent that, who doesn't care about anything, you know, let your kid browse everywhere on your cell phone, on their cell phone, you know, on the internet. What do you think they're going to encounter? What do you think they're going to see? I mean, do I even have to explain? I mean, I, it's so dirty, I don't even want to say anything, but you just have to think about those pop-ups. I mean, pop-ups don't care if you're old or young, right? Pop-ups don't know. Maybe they do, like Google hears everything, but right? But many of the times, right, it would just pop very filthy stuff up. And when kid is like elementary age, yeah. do you think they need to see those things? No. Then, as a parent, you have to protect them. That's, right. That's your responsibility. Yeah. It's, you know, stop with, oh, you know, they're individuals. They have their own mind of thinking. You know what? You know, if, if your own parents didn't guide you the right way, for many, right? Not all the time, you know, some people had difficult or different circumstances. But if your parents guided you the right way, shouldn't you guide your parents, I mean, kids the right way too? You should, right? It's your responsibility. You will stop you yourself, your children, your family from backsliding more than you are right now when you avoid televisions, when you avoid those wicked internet, social media stuff. Yes. It's not about just looking at it, right? That's why, you know, it's like where YouTube, where it forces on people to play those ads now. You know? yeah. I mean, you can't wait for those where five seconds and you click and you know, skip it. Those things will get on your head. Why do you think they pay advertising? Why? Because it works. Yeah. The more you put them on people's face, the more they will remember. Right? I mean, certain products I never thought of and heard of, but I see it on commercial. I'm like, man, I can't get it out of my head, whether good or bad. That's how much influence what you see has on you. That's why the more you spend in the book looking at the Word of God instead of other things will help you more and more. And it will keep you away from sin. It will keep you away from the world and the devil and your flesh. Amen. And then it becomes easier to treat your flesh 
like their members. Yes. Amen. Amen. If I could do that better, right, I would definitely sin less. Yes. If I could just treat every member of my body, hey, he's dead, you know. What can that thing do? Right. I mean, do you expect someone who died like 200 years ago to suddenly stand up and go places, right? No, they're a dead being. Do you expect their fingers to move? Do you expect their feet to go to, you know, sinful places? Do you expect their eyes to see all this filth everywhere? No, they're dead. They can't do it. And when you consider your flesh that being, and they treat it like that, man, you're going to have a so much, so much, how should I say, holier Christian life. Amen. You're going to be so much cleaner. Yes. I think one of the things that, you know, every backsliding, you know, Christian should think about is that, man, how dirty you and I have become. Yes. Right? All this filth that we are filtering and bring it into ourselves. Right? I mean, the Bible says you're temple of holy God. I mean, do you treat it as such? But you don't. You and I, you know, many times don't treat our, you know, this temple of God like we should. If you trust that Christ, you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. I mean, Holy Spirit is in you. I mean, then how are you treating the Holy Ghost, right? Why do you always grieve the Holy Ghost? By what you see, right? Because of what you see will translate into a lot of times what you will feel and think, and they will translate into action. Right. If, all of, if these people, young people, are always, always exposed to smoking, not all of them, but some might fall. Yes. Because they're constantly exposed to it, and they're saying that you know, it's okay. Like smoking joint, right? Marijuana is legalized, right? It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And they, their friends are doing it. If your friends are doing it, you know, get rid of them, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean how should, why, why are you with those, you know, who's smoking joints and stuff, right? Yeah. I'm trying to witness them. Get out of here, right? <laughs> you know, your main reason is you want to participate in the same sin. You know, give them track. You know, give, try to witness them. You know, if they're your real friend, they'll get right and stay get saved, or if not, they'll just avoid you. You, know, you don't have to do much. <laughs> then you keep on getting exposed to it. Then eventually, you're going to fall. You're not that strong. I mean, you and I, we call ourselves like Bible believers, but you and I, we're not that strong. You and I could fall just like that. You know, I'm like weak, you know. I mean, you're weak too. I mean, everybody's weak. Then, what do we do with babies? We protect them. Yes. We protect them from many, many things because they don't know better. Yeah. Right? We protect them from hot things. We protect them from chemicals. We protect from poison. We protect them from everything. Yeah. You need protection. Amen. I need protection. And Lord has provided that protection for us. Right. Why is it that we neglect it and say no to it? Why is it that you and I get burned, right? I'm not supposed to touch that hot pan, so-called sin, the flesh, and the devil. And Lord's saying, don't touch it. Don't touch it. I'm protecting you. But one thing about the Lord is that he gave us free will. So you and I have choice to do it or not to do it. But the Lord has given us choice and the way out of it. It's just like it's up to you and me to accept it. In this, you know, last days, come on. We have a lot to live for. Yes. Especially. There are millions of souls on their way to hell. Your backsliding not only affects you, it affects others. Think about that. Your backsliding living may be a bad testimony to others yes. where they could have gotten saved but they saw you. They know you're a Christian. You don't have to tell me. But I know you're a Christian. Man, but you live like just like me. Sinful, devil ways, right? Devilish ways. 
So I don't want what you have. It affects not only you, it affects people around you, others, your backsliding life. I mean, how selfish can you be, honestly? I mean, if your only destruct, destruction is only on you, okay, go ahead and destroy yourself. However, because of your backsliding life, it affects other people. Yeah. You're taking other people down with you. And I think that's super selfish. I think that's just a wrong way to live your life. Very true. If I know that, say, I have this certain disease, and it could be transmitted by me, you know, shaking their hand, right? I mean, just decent human being, you know, even besides from being a Christian, right? I won't shake their hand. I'll just die alone. But if you're a wicked being, right? If you're a selfish being, you know what? I'm going to go down together. I'm going to shake their hand. I'm going to shake her hand. I'm going to shake his hand. I'm going to shake as many people as I can so that I could bring as many people down. I mean, we, we actually had those kind of cases. You know, people, someone had AIDS, right, or HIV positive, and then they're carrying the syringes, yeah. and then they go to these clubs or something. You know, think about it. You know, people don't know what's going on. They're already, you know, half drunk. They don't know what's going on. They go and start, you know, you know jabbing at people. Yeah. Needle goes into them, you know, infecting you know, as many people as they can. I mean, that's very evil, yeah. right? But don't think that you're not like them. You and I are just like them with our sinful ways. You know, we're just contaminating. We're poisoning our loved ones with our backsliding ways. Yes. Think about it. When you realize that, what do you have to do? What's the solution? You need to repent. Amen. You and I have to go to the Lord, confess our sins, and get right. It's uh, something that we have to do on a daily basis. Don't do it at the end of the year. And thinking that, you know, I'm going to remember everything that I've done wrong. No, you're not. Right? You have to do it on a daily basis. Like, I have to judge myself on a daily basis. And then pray to the Lord, like, Lord, please fill me with the Holy Ghost. You know? I don't want to fall back into my backsliding ways. I want to remember my first love. And I want to live just like that first love days. I know I want you to be center of my life. Whatever I do before, I want to talk to you, and I want to be just that person. Everything that I do is based on you instead of me, the world, the flesh, the devil, right? Then you will be like, wow, my fellowship with the Lord has gotten closer. And then you could see, wow, I'm sinning less. Man, those backsliding days are going away little by little, little by little. It won't completely go away because we'll, unless we go to heaven, unless you and I die or rapture happens, you know, it's not going to completely go away. It will be something that maybe we could count. Inside, instead of, you know, being countless for us nowadays, right? Maybe, man, we're so close to the Lord. Oh, Lord, you know, I know I shouldn't have thought that way. I shouldn't have, you know, done that thing. You could actually, you know, confess your sins and get right with the Lord just like that. In, in order to get to that point, yeah, your fellowship with the Lord has to get closer. Get Again, pray and study the Word. Amen. Simple as that. Pray and pray. study the Word. Pray. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we have a lot to be ashamed about, Lord. I mean, we're, we're just sinners saved by grace. But many times we think we're more than that you know, pride gets in the way, the world and flesh and the devil gets in the way, and we neglect and we forget that we're backsliding, and it's so easy to backslide, Lord. And even remembering Solomon, the wisest man, man he backslid, Lord. We're not better than him. We're not better than anybody. Help us to keep, you know, humble heart, Lord God. Help us to pray and help us study the word. Help us to and help our you know, people to protect their children 
from these worldly things, especially protect the eyes, Lord God. I pray that as the year ends, Lord, help us to realize how much time we've wasted because of our backsliding ways and help us to get right with you, Lord. And as you have given so many chances, second chances to everybody in the Bible, you have given second chances to David, you have given second chances to all, myself and everybody included, Lord. Help us to appreciate these second chances, get up again, get right, and really live a life that's pleasing to you, remembering the first love. We pray that those who aren't able to make it or those who are going through you know, physical ailments or anything else in their life, Lord God, please lead them according to your will, Lord. Heal them, Lord, so that we could worship you together. And I pray that during this pandemic, thank you for continuing to protecting us and continue to protect us. And above all, even so come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. 